Welcome to Father and Son this week. Um, welcome to you, Tom. Morning, Dad. You've got an elephant tie on. You're copying me again. There's, now, a, there's a baby elephant, I think, being born in the Sydney Zoo, someone told me, so I thought I'd copy you and wear an elephant tie and elephant cufflinks. Well, yeah, that's very clever. Yeah. Like father, like son. Now, we've got to talk about the floods. I think the most humorous thing that came out if there is any humour about these floods, was the Governor of Victoria, Mr De Kretza, uh, he came out and said that the floods were all caused by climate change. And our new erstwhile Premier Ted Bailey told him very politely that that's not true, it was created by the La Nina effect, which we've known about for months. So what do you think the major issues are left in the floods? The costs of going through the roof, you know, half of Victoria is underwater. Well, well so firstly, we'll he's not our erstwhile premier. The erstwhile premier is John Brumby. Erstwhile means former. Um, but oh, he's at, he's at, yeah, yeah. Does Erst it? is old English. Erst, other, other while, previous yeah. premier. Uh, well, it's interesting this whole debate about global warming because, you know, global warming was blamed for the drought. Or it was, uh, and, and now we have the reverse floods, and global warming is responsible for that too. And in fact, they've even gone off saying global warming. It's now climate change because that encompasses, uh, encompasses both cold and hot, and you know, it's, it's blizzards in North, North America. Anyway, the, the, the point is, I'm not sure it's the governor general's place to start it's making the governor, those. Not the governor sorry, general. the governor. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the governor's place to start making those sorts of pronouncements. No. I mean, you know, whether you believe in climate change or not. Uh, but in any case, the La Nina effect, which has caused the floods in Queensland and the floods here in Victoria, is a well-known weather pattern, and that's exactly. why we that's why we have. And it's been known for months that it was going to occur. Yeah, exactly. And of course, we can't predict exactly where. I mean, it could be <coughs> in the middle of Melbourne, where you know we just luck that it didn't. Uh, whereas Brisbane, of course, it did hit the middle of Brisbane. Well, it did, yeah, but I mean, had they had that dam, the, what's it called? The uh, Wyvernhoe Dam. Had they had that only half full, Brisbane would have avoided most of the flooding. Well, it's interesting. In fact, several experts have come out and said what you said, that the dam could have been managed better. The problem with the Brisbane Dam appears is that they have two conflicting objectives. Yeah. One is flood management, two is water retention, and there was a policy in place where, where there was water there not to let it go below 100% because they were still thinking about drought conditions even though they've been out of a drought for a couple of years in Queensland. So they're going to have to change the rules. And the bureaucrats who ran it decided that if the rules were the rules of the rules, they had to be followed even if it had catastrophic results for the people downstream. Well, which we had. Which we had. So in Victoria, look, it, it, it's not as bad as Queensland. Well, obviously. There's no, there's not, there's only been one death. But, yeah. but in terms of agriculture, it's probably worse because a lot of stock have been lost, a lot of cows, a lot of sheep. Price of mutton has gone up 30% since the flood started. I tried to get an order for Hong Kong. 30% in a week it's gone up. Well, food prices are jumping. Sweet potatoes, capsicums, mangoes. Uh, a lot of I don't eat any of those well, things. Well, they're all produced in Queensland and they're going up. But interestingly, I've done some research. It seems that extreme weather events of either the cold or the hot variety or the wet variety are actually responsible for a global, a substantial global rise in food prices. So, you know, some of those predictions in the 1970s about it's running out of food, I'm not saying that's coming true, but we are seeing not just in Australia but around the world, food is getting more expensive. And politically, that is a very difficult thing for governments to deal with. Well, they'll go back to eating rice back in Asia, I think. That's what they'll have to do. Well, we're, gonna, we're not going to have enough wheat to export this year. That's another one. So it's interesting. Anyway, floods are going to cost a lot of money. The big debate about what, what is to be done There's with insurance. people who don't have insurance. It's already starting to spark up, even though the floodwaters haven't subsided. And I don't know what the answer is. I mean, Well, every, every insurance company has a slightly different definition. And 60% of them don't provide any flood insurance. No, that's right. And Why should I, living in a four-storey apartment, at the penthouse I live in, why should I pay for flood damage? There's no way I'm going to be ever flooded out. No, I mean, and the weird thing is most will pay it for storm damage. That's water from above, yes. but water that rises from below, they won't. Look, there's, there's a bigger issue here. Town planning comes into it. You know, if you can't get flood insurance because you're in a floodplain, should you even live there in the first place? Well, you've covered this off yeah. week in, week out. Yeah. Now, there's a few people in Queensland with a similar view to you that uh, we shouldn't rebuild in certain areas, but gee, it's going to deflate the co the value of homes and the land they've got. Well, that's right. In fact, and this is why bank stocks are struggling at the moment because you know there's a lot of property there which may not be allowed to be built on again if there's mortgages against it. I mean, people are going to default on their mortgages, and the banks will end up wearing them. So, lots of issues, lots of money that's got to be raised. I don't think we should have a special flood levy. I think the federal government already taxes us enough and has plenty of capacity to borrow if we need it. Yeah. But uh, you know, I think like the, the Medicare levy which is still with us after all these years, we could end up with a 
another tax to, to help pay for all this. So should they balance the budget now in uh, year 12-13 as they've promised to do the federal government or should they spend more money restoring the flood damage? Look, I think they should just say we'll put out the budget balancing a year. You know, so this is an unexpected event. It's, it's a huge natural disaster. And just say, look, spend the money and say the budget will be back in surplus by 2014, not 2013. I think that's what most business people are saying. I don't think that's going to affect the A dollar or exports or anything like that. Now, one interesting fact, uh, yesterday was 44 years since Sir Robert Gordon Menzies retired as Prime Minister. Harold Holt came in and he died a year later in December 67. Just after I was born. That's right. And uh, they never found his body. We don't know if the Russians took him, the Chinese, or just the sharks. I guess it was the sharks. <laughs> I agree. Now, you've got another subject about accession to the royal throne. Yeah, just a very quick one. There's uh, Apparently in Britain they're contemplating a change to the what there is of the British Constitution to say that the uh, succession to the throne should no longer be gender-based. So the firstborn child male or female, will, will become the next monarch. Now well, they have to get Australia's acceptance of that. Well, they? here's the funny thing. There are still 15 countries around the world that have um, the, the British king or queen as their head of state as well. Every single one of them will have to approve this change. Otherwise, you could have a weird situation where if you had a brother and sister and it was a younger brother and older sister, the older sister could be queen in some countries and the younger brother could be king in others. Uh, it's just an Chaotic. interesting one. Well, it's ridiculous. But, Trying to make the royal family equal. Why are they royals anyway? That's hardly equal. Secondly, why is it the firstborn that gets to be the king or queen? That's hardly equal. Well, why well, you focus... Well, but that's why British, the British no, no, I realize. Like, hey, <clears throat> the eldest son gets no, all no, the spoils I, I realize, anyway. I realise that, but so why bother worrying about just the gender aspect of it without but isn't this to do with the EU? Because yes, it, it is. You, know, you need equal opportunity and all this nonsense. But, but again, you're not giving equal opportunity to the second born as opposed to the first born. So no. why focus on the gender? Anyway, it's going to come up and we'll all get a chance to approve it. All right, that's it for this week. Have a very happy Australia Day and uh, we'll see you next week.